An entitled Karen walks up to my art at an exhibit and writes her Instagram handle all over it, and I couldn't be more upset. Last night, I was doing a live painting for a Bad Bunny event here in town. My sister and I were both artists, and each of us had our own canvas where we were adding all sorts of things. We were set up on a stage and were away from the general crowded area. The canvas I was working on had a lot of layered lettering that I was adding as the night went on. Every time a song would come on, I would write the title of the song or the lyrics specifically to the song that was playing from the artist. At one point, I had to go find the host of the event to ask for something. While I searched for him, my sister was talking to one of her friends and left the stage we were on to go find him. When I came back, there was a girl holding one of my paint markers standing on stage and she had written her Instagram handle smack in the center of my art piece. As soon as I saw her, I rushed over to her and asked her what on earth did she think she was doing? I repeatedly told her, who on earth do you think you are to just come up here and start touching other people's stuff without permission? She said that she was also an artist. I told her, I don't care who you are. If you're an artist, you should know better. I also said that nobody gave you permission to come up here. She tries to say, well, you should have put up a sign saying not to come up here. To which I replied, uh, honestly, who does that? It's common sense not to touch other people's art. She got mad at me saying that someone else did it too. To which I replied, I I don't care, please leave. She never even apologized and just kept talking, trying to make me supposedly chill out. And I just spoke over her and kept saying things like, I don't care, please leave, and what's wrong with you? She just kept talking. She eventually left, and I grabbed a can of spray paint and wrote over her Instagram handle. I wish I would have taken a photo of it first before erasing it, but I was so angry I just covered it right away. I then found my sister and sternly scolded her for leaving the station because she she was talking to her friends. Next time, maybe I will put up a sign not to come up on stage and vandalize someone else's art. That's a bummer that the original poster got rid of their Instagram handle and didn't take a picture of it or didn't look it up before they got rid of it. It would have been interesting to see if they tried to claim that art as their own. I know a lot of people on Instagram sometimes do that, where they take someone else's art and they're like, hey, look what I did. Even though it's like super obvious that, hey, no, you didn't. So it would have been nice to check that to see like, oh, did they try and steal my art? But it is what it is. It's so crazy crazy that someone would walk up and vandalize someone's art. Like, how can you not see that the paint is probably still wet? In no situation is it okay for you to vandalize your art with your stupid Instagram handle. And you know they only did that just so they could get attention. Because they themselves probably couldn't even get hired for a venue like this, let alone make something that was noteworthy enough for you to put your Instagram handle on it in the first place. I mean, what a trashy person, to be honest. But next time something like this happens, hopefully they keep the Instagram handle so they can message them later and share shame them just a little bit more for trying to steal their art. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for telling my mother she couldn't visit me and my child? So I just had a baby five months ago, and my mother invited herself to stay in my house for a month while I was waiting to go into labor. She insisted on being in the delivery room while I gave birth without asking me how I felt about it. She even went as far as getting a special certificate certification just so she could be in the room. COVID is a huge concern around here, and I had just gotten over having it, along with my husband. I had an OBGYN appointment and asked about the rules of the hospital in regards to people being in the room with me while I was delivering, and the nurse told me that if I tested positive for COVID, one person could be with me, but they couldn't leave the room. My mother insisted that it should be her to be let in the room rather than my husband, and this is because she is a first-time grandma mother. I explained to my mom that my husband would be the one present if by chance I still tested positive. So the time comes around for me to deliver my baby and my mother is in the lobby waiting for me. I ended up testing positive for COVID and I called my mother who was still waiting in the lobby to be let in and I explained to her that she could not be in the room. She then accused me of lying to her just so I didn't have to have her in the room with me and she ended up driving back home because of that. I delivered my baby and things seemed like they were going well. My mother came back to the hospital and visited, and I asked her and my stepfather to wear masks because they were traveling across state lines, and I was worried that my baby might get sick. They had no issues aside from a few comments about how apparently the baby wouldn't know what his grandparents look like with these masks on. Fast forward to two months ago, and they were supposed to visit me and my family for my birthday. I once again texted them and asked them to wear masks and politely expressed why 
I put those rules in place. My mother read the message and a few seconds later, I received a call from her. She started off the conversation by saying that she hadn't gone anywhere in the past few weeks, even though she texted me multiple times previously, saying that she was out with friends, she was at a gathering for family, etc. She then went on to say that she shouldn't have to wear a mask because it was unfair to her and that it was dangerous for the baby not to see her without a mask. I stood my ground and told her that I was concerned for my baby's health, but she proceeded to scream at me and even bring my disabled father into the conversation. She said, your father is dying and you don't wear a mask around him when you see him. Don't you care about his health? She knows I'm very sensitive when it comes to my father, so I felt like this may have been a direct way to try and hurt me, but I ended up telling her that I did not want her to come and see my son if she was going to treat me that way. I'm an adult now, and I feel that even though I'm her child, I am not a child. I feel that if she wants me to respect her, I should get the same respect in return. So I go back to the same question. Am I the jerk for telling my mom she can't visit my child? Not at all. You are not the jerk for this situation. I've always had the opinion when it comes to your child, you set the ground rules. And if your mom can't respect those rules, well then congratulations, you can't see the kid. And it's hilarious that this mom would try and say, well the baby's not going to recognize this if we're wearing our mask. This baby doesn't even realize that it's a baby. It hasn't even reached object permanence yet. It doesn't even know what a human is, let alone a mask. Like the baby's not going to remember this moment. You are. And as far as I'm concerned, the original poster's mom in this situation is just being selfish and incredibly toxic. Especially when it comes up to this mom bringing up the original poster's disabled father. The OP is right. This lady 100% brought that up just to try and hurt them. And you definitely don't need to put up with that. So no, you are not the jerk in this situation. And I think it's great that you stood your ground. You are an adult now and you're no longer a child. And if they want to see your kid, they got to play by your rules. An entitled influencer gives our salon a one-star review after being a terrible customer. So this girl booked online for a short hair blow dry. And when she arrives, she literally has hair down to her bottom. Our hairdresser politely told her that she had booked a service that takes around 30 minutes, whereas her hair would take at least an hour to do. This girl works in the beauty industry and is well aware of how these bookings work. So we suggested that she could either reschedule or cancel her appointment, or we will recruit some of the other salon workers to help out and make it happen for her. So the manager helps do the blow drying and the girl is chatting away with no drama. We get it done in the end and she's happy. She gives no complaints and in the end, we actually charge her for the short blow dry rather than the long one just to be kind. All because it was a bit hectic with the two people helping rather than one. The next day, we get a one star review on Google. We're surprised as we did go out of our way to make it happen for her and she was genuinely happy when she left. We speak to her on the phone and she just says how traumatizing it was, telling us that she felt rushed and that some water went on her face when her hair was being washed. She still says that she loved the blow dry, but the rest of the experience was just anxiety provoking. So we did our standard thing. We apologized for her bad experience and we offered to have her come back in for a free treatment just to try and smooth things over. Typical customer service stuff. But unfortunately, she has not answered back. She has since gone to another salon and is now posting discount codes for them. Our salon reviews are otherwise five stars. And of course, this has brought the overall rating down for something that we feel is totally not justified. It was really confusing and honestly just really rude. That is really unfortunate that someone would go to such lengths just to give a bad review to a salon or to any business for that matter. The only time I would ever go online to give a one star review to a restaurant or a place of business that I've gone to would be if something legitimately terrible happened. Like if I saw an employee do something absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not even talking about minor slip ups. I'm talking about some kind of earth shattering experience where I'm like, whoa, I can never go back there again. I honestly hate how people use Google reviews as some kind of like open threat against businesses just to try and bring them down. And in this case, the one star review was absolutely not warranted. Like, you know how you make a change in a business or some kind of operation? You talk to the manager, you discuss the issue and say, hey, this is how I felt after this experience. And then you can get the free treatment and some kind of correction. But going online and leaving a one star review, even after you expressed how happy you were with the treatment and how you enjoyed being treated there just seems really counterintuitive. It just seems very petty and it almost seems out of nowhere. And I think you also have to remember that the person who signed up for this treatment at this salon signed up knowing that their hair was super long. And so for them to be like, oh, it's just 2K 
chaotic and it was really anxiety inducing. That's a really big cop out in my opinion because I'm sure that the employees as well as the rest of the people that work there as well as the manager were probably scrambling just to make sure they could accommodate this stupid lady. So yeah, don't sweat it. One star is not going to do that bad. And if anything, you could probably leave a response to the bad review and be like, hey, this is what we did and this is why we had to do it. Because if I'm being completely honest, I don't know if anybody who has a perfect score when it comes to a review of some kind and one bad egg is not going to spoil the bunch. So you should be good. My boyfriend's mom keeps insisting that I'm apparently going to cheat on him at college. So I'm an 18 year old female and I met this guy Max online over two years ago. There was a huge group of mine and his friends that game together and we just talked for hours literally every day for the past two years. In November of last year, we realized that we really liked each other and in December we became official. Then in March, my friends and I traveled across the country to meet that group of friends. It was really cool. Since then, he's been coming over here once a month to visit and next month I'm going there. About five weeks ago, his mom started suggesting that I would cheat on him and that he should start seeing other people too. Obviously, neither of us would ever do that, but it really hurts my feelings. Just about a week ago, she was talking about how good of an influence I am, practically praising me for my high grades, as well as all the activities and sports I did at my school, and how happy she is that we're together. However, today he went shopping with her and he texted me to tell me that she said she knew how girls like me are and that I'm going to want to date, aka sleep around in college. This is 100% not true. I love my boyfriend and I'd never do anything to hurt him like that. He's been acting different and I think with how much she's been saying it now, he's starting to believe her. It just really hurts me that she thinks that I would do that and I don't know how to convince him or her that I wouldn't. What should I do? Honestly, if your partner is so easily swayed by other people's mistaken opinions of you, then his trust in you isn't firm enough for a relationship. I mean, that's just where it goes down to be completely honest. Also, you're both teenagers, so I mean like, hey, you got your whole college life ahead of you. You have a lot of time to grow up. And if he really can't see that, hey, I'm going to try and keep this relationship going and I'm going to make things work, then honestly, that's his problem. It's not yours. His mom is a complete idiot who is clearly trying to manipulate the situation and is trying to fill his head with lies. I mean, if anything, you could definitely get back at the mom and prove her wrong by being super loyal to this guy. And you could do that just to spite her. But overall, you need to have a serious conversation with your boyfriend and be like, hey, do you love me? If you do, then you need to realize that I do as well and I'm not going to cheat on you. And if that's not enough for you to stick around with him, well, then that's your answer, to be honest. And if it does go that route, then guess what? Congratulations, you have college to look forward to. And trust me when I say this, there's going to be a lot more opportunities there for you in college than you ever had in high school. I am secretly a multimillionaire and I don't know how to tell my boyfriend. What should I do? My boyfriend and I have been together for around nine months. I go to college in the United States, but am from another country. We met freshman year and have a really sweet and honest relationship. He is coming to visit soon and he will see my house and lifestyle. Obviously, this is not an actual problem, just an uncomfortable conversation that we will inevitably need to have. People here are super conservative and close-minded. I need to tell my boyfriend about so much more than just money, but also that people who know me just because of my last name. I know that I can be open with him about anything, but I fear that I have waited too long to tell him and that I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I'm sure that he doesn't suspect anything because I tend to dress casually and not really show how much money I come from. Is this something I should discuss with him before he visits? Or do you think I'm good to talk to him about it once he arrives? Some advice on this situation would really be appreciated because honestly, I don't know what to do. First off, this is a wonderful problem to have. I wish I had this problem. Oh no, my significant other doesn't know that I'm rich. How do I explain this? I know it sounds silly, but honestly, it is kind of silly. This is a very simple situation where honestly you could just go, hey, uh, my family comes from a lot of money and then leave it at that. Obviously, this is probably not going to change anything to do with your relationship. You already have some semblance of a good relationship and you both love each other. You even said it yourself. You have a sweet, honest relationship with this guy. So there really shouldn't be any issues with telling him, hey, I'm loaded. And this will probably be even easier for you to explain. You could just tell him, hey, it's my parents who are rich, not me. I'm not rich. I didn't do something crazy to become some rich millionaire. It's my parents who are loaded. And having rich parents doesn't mean that you can't have a good relationship. And honestly, Honestly, there's no real way to predict whether he'll try to take advantage of the situation or not. Because at the end of the day, it's not your money. It's your parents. But in my honest opinion, you had better tell him this before he comes over to your place. Because this is a big situation, in my opinion. It's not your money, yes, but you definitely need to tell him before he shows up. 
This way he can be ready for whatever it is that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. From the way the original poster is describing this, it sounds like the original poster and her family are much more famous than you would expect, especially for her boyfriend to be ready for. So yeah, you want to tell him about this like right away. It'll be a lot easier once he rolls up and then he can kind of see what's going on. Imagine if he doesn't know, then he rolls up to see you in your home country and then he's completely blindsided by this weird, different lifestyle that you have. And yeah, it's going to seem weird to him. So in my opinion, say something sooner than later because otherwise this could really freak your boyfriend out. My parents do not like my boyfriend and I'm not sure what to do about it. For context, I'm a 22-year-old woman who just graduated college last week. For the past year and a half, I have been dating a man who I met through a friend at school. He is 41 years old, but I never felt like the age difference was an issue and it's by far the best relationship I've ever had. Since I had to move back home after graduating, I felt like I had to tell my parents about the relationship and they were not happy. My dad was first upset about the age difference, while my mom was more okay with it. I reminded them that my mom's parents, so my grandparents, had a 16-year difference, and that was never an issue for them. Then my dad backtracked by asking me about his race and why he looked dark in the pictures. I replied that he is a quarter black from his mom's side. So then my dad dropped the age thing and said I shouldn't be dating a black person. Then he started asking about his religion and got even more upset when I said he is Baptist. My my family, for reference, is Methodist. This discussion happened yesterday. Today, I mentioned it again and my mom had cooled down a bit and said that since we've been dating for over a year, she is open to meeting him and getting to know him. But my dad is still fixated on the fact that he's a quarter black and his church is not in communion with ours, and therefore he is not a proper Christian. Has anyone ever dealt with this before and do they have any advice? I told my boyfriend about all of this and he said just to give them time and to see if they come around. I brought up the possibility of me moving in with him and cutting off ties with my parents, but he doesn't think that that will be necessary and seems to be more hopeful than I am about an amicable resolution. What should I do? I think this is obvious, but maybe I just need to shout this from the rooftops. Your parents are racist, especially your dad. The fact that your boyfriend being black is somehow a deal breaker is absolutely disgusting. I can ignore the religious aspect of it. I totally understand that some religions have it where you can only marry people that are close to, if not in your own religion. I don't know much details about that, but the fact that your dad openly implies and has even said that the fact that your boyfriend is black is somehow a deal breaker in this situation is absolutely mind boggling. This is 2022. How can someone actually honestly have that opinion nowadays? If you're in love with this man and you really care for him, I say date him no matter what your parents say, especially the useless garbage your dad has coming out of his mouth. If I was legitimately in your situation, I would would not for a second let the religious bigots that are my parents determine who I can and can't date and soon marry. Like, that's not only disgusting, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Your parents should be ashamed of themselves and you have the right idea. If I was in your shoes, I 100% would move out and cut contact with my parents and never talk to them again. But that's just me. What would you do? Leave a comment down below. What would you do if you were in this situation? Today I messed up by realizing that I don't think I've been paying my taxes correctly. Directly, or at all in that matter. For some background, I've been working for my friend's family Mexican restaurant since I was 16. I started off hosting at one location, and now I've been waitressing at a newer one for a few weeks. This is really embarrassing, but until I met my boyfriend, I had no idea how taxes worked or that people who work at restaurants were supposed to pay them. I've never once asked my boss or co-workers, who are all mostly friends of my family, anything about taxes. I get paid in cash wrapped in a check with the amount of cash I'm receiving written somewhere. This has been how I've been getting paid for the past three years. My boyfriend was recently asking me about taxes and freaked out when he realized I didn't know what he was talking about. Two weeks ago, I asked my boss, who's my friend's dad, about a W-2 form, which was my boyfriend's idea, in order to pay my taxes. And he basically said, oh, okay, sure, I'll give that to you sometime. And since that, I haven't heard anything from him. After I asked him, he turned to my other friend who works with me and asked her if she would like one too, which I thought was strange because she's been working here for two years as well. Is this going to screw me financially? Have you guys experienced anything like this? I don't want to hurt my friend's family, but I should be paying taxes, right? Please give me advice on this. No one I know talks about this, and I'm not sure what to do. Oh man, this one gave me a headache. Should you be paying taxes? Is that a real question that I'm hearing right now? Should you be paying taxes? Yes, you should absolutely be paying taxes. Any income you make, guess what? You got to pay taxes on that. You got to declare it. You need to say, hey, 
I made this money. Here you go. And then, of course, the government's going to be like, thank you. And then they take a little bit of it. But you have to declare money that you make, even if it's in cash. That's really important. But that's minor, in my opinion, compared to what you're actually dealing with. What you've been working under is a restaurant that has not wanted to employ you. That means that they just pay you money and that's it. You're not on their books. You're not on any kind of records. The fact that you had to go to them to get a W-2 form just so you could file your taxes correctly is insane to me. And your friend also was offered one with the implication being that they're paying them under the table as well. That restaurant is probably saving so much money by doing it this way. I don't know the legality of that. That's none of my business. I have no clue what I'm talking about in that regard. But from my perspective, that is super sketchy. I don't know the details of the kind of restaurant you're working at or anything along those lines. But to answer your question, yeah, you need to pay taxes. But you're also really young from the sounds of it, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. This would be a lot different if you were older and you were making money and you weren't declaring it. But the biggest lesson here is pay your taxes. File it completely and correctly and accurately and you'll be just fine. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.